If you're not familiar with Instapaper, it's fairly easy to use Instapaper to save web content to be read later. You can then convert the content by either reading it on your computer, or you can send it to your iPhone, iPad, or, more relevant to my blog post today, to your Kindle or other e-readers. Fundamentally, Instapaper works with what's called a bookmarklet. This Read Later button can simply be dragged into your browser bar, and anytime you click this Read Later bar, it's going to save additional articles into your Instapaper interface. If you're new to Instapaper, you'll need to create an account, but to show you how the articles look, I'm going to go ahead and log into my account, which I already have established. You can see here I've saved two articles already. Again, to clarify, if I want to save anything on the web, like this article from Chronicle um, of Higher Education, I would simply click my bookmarklet, and you'll see Instapaper is saving it to my Instapaper <coughs> um, dashboard. When I'm ready to send it to my e-reader, I have two options. One is I can auto-configure Instapaper to send me anything in this archive on a regular schedule by emailing it to my, <coughs> my Kindle. Um, and there's another screencast just below this YouTube video in my blog post, and I encourage you to check that out. They explain how to configure that. I'm going to explain the simpler situation, which is if I just want these two articles and I want them in a format for EPUB or Kindle, I would simply click on the appropriate button, and it's going to automatically convert these files into, in this case, um, Mobi, so that I can read it with Kindle. You can see I can probably even open this with Stanza Desktop and just double check that the content is, in fact, there. So you can see here it's been converted into a friendly Kindle format, and then I could upload that file onto my Kindle by just plugging my Kindle into the computer and automatically dragging the file into my Kindle.